Good morning. I think it's uh, morning in Brazil, right? It is 10 o'clock, yes. So, uh, first question. Um, do you have the album ready before you joined uh, Atomic Fire Records? Uh, pretty much. Uh, we were uh, finalizing some arrangements and, uh, you know, doing some, some overdubs, working on strings, choirs, percussion, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Most of the album was already recorded. Okay. Um, did you have to shop around or was uh, a no-brainer joining Atomic Fire? We were already talking with them about a different uh, business. And at the same time, we didn't come to an agreement on release date with our previous label. So we mentioned to Atomic Fire that we didn't, you know, agree with the release date. And that also we would like to, we would love to work with Atomic Fire. And immediately they jumped on board and the rest is history. Yeah. Oh, makes sense. So for a band like Angra, uh, with uh, three decades of activity, does a new record deal have any effect? I mean, it does, but it doesn't. You know, at the same time, we're a 32-year band. We have a crowd, you know, people that have been following the band for many, many years. So, yeah, that doesn't change. But having new blood and people, you know, fresh on the music with fresh ideas, you know, uh, that really believe in the album. That's really important. And they have all the know-how from, uh, you know, Nuclear Blast and all the previous record labels these guys worked on. They have a great roster. They have a lot of ex experience. So we, I think it's great for everybody. Did you start working on uh, Cycles of Pain during the lockdowns or after those? Uh, we did, but it didn't really work for us. I, I guess we're really old fashioned when it comes to writing music because we really like to write together and having Fabio living in Italy and Bruno living in LA and Marcelo living in Brasilia, we were far away from each other for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. We tried to do it via Zoom and we managed to do some things, but it really only started flowing when we got together as a band. And then it went like lightning fast. You know, we were so eager to start writing and playing together and just hanging out, you know. Uh, it was a very nice, one of the nicest, if not the nicest uh, writing processes I've been part of in this band. Everything went smoothly and fast and very efficient, you know. The creative juices were flowing around all the time. And yeah. It was great. It was a great experience. So should we consider Cycles of Pain as a concept album? We do have a concept, but mm -hmm. not in the classic sense. It's not a story, and every song is not tied together by a story or by, by a common line. We have a common theme, which is the pain and its cycles. Okay. And pain takes many forms in, in one's life. You know, since you're born, you're born with pain involved. And growing up is full of, of different levels and kinds of pains. And life creates uh, the opportunity for us to feel pain and heal from it. And we're more focused on the healing part and using pain as a stepping stone for evolution and growth more than, you know, just dwelling on pain and, or, you know, savoring the sorrow or whatever, you know. It's a more positive outlook. So when did this idea, this loose concept came to mind? It came naturally once we started writing the songs, the, the lyrics, it became clear that it would be impossible to avoid the subject mm -hmm. because there was no shortage of pain during the pandemic for everybody. And in our personal lives, we are uh, going through different difficulties and, and tough moments and dealing with pain on a daily basis. So the inspiration comes from daily life, you know, and we started realizing that this common thread was present even before we had a, a, a theme for the album or even a name, you know. Uh, when did you involve Erike? Uh, I hope he, I'm pronouncing his name correctly for the artwork, because as, as I understand it, artwork contains almost not almost every artwork of uh, Angra albums actually uh, we try to mix 
the concept of the cycles of pain represented by the angel of death. And also being that this is our 10th studio album, we thought it would be nice to have these Easter eggs with all the different elements from different albums in our career. And I think Eric, the illustrator of the cover did a great job in hiding some of them. Some of them are pretty obvious. Oh yes. But some of them are, are more hidden and demand that the, the, the listener really know uh, about the previous albums. Okay, good. Yes, I was trying, I had some fun trying to find uh, the references. Yes. However, this is not like the band uh, closing a chapter, right? No, I, I mean, uh, if this album uh, is the, the, the bar, you know, for how it's going to be from now on, we can do it for 30 years to come. Great. Because it was just fun. You know, it's just a pleasure to work with these guys. It was a big pleasure to work with Dennis again. That mm. was really cool, you know, because Dennis, he really knows the band and he really understands our style and our fans. So it was a pretty comfortable uh, process that I would do over and over again for the rest of my life, for sure. Great. So since you mentioned Dennis, uh, did you have all the music ready before entering the studio or uh, did you uh, make adjustments while in the studio? Uh, we've made a lot of adjustments. Dennis is great in just listening to the songs and figuring out what they need, you know, in terms of maybe uh, lacking arrangements or structure or maybe tonality, uh, uh, what suits better for, for Fabio's voice. And he also has a great vision of the album balance in between the songs because even though it's 2023 and everyone listens to singles nowadays mm -hmm. we still believe in an album you know and we still care about the dynamics within the album and then is is a it's like a six member when it, when he joins the the pre-production especially process uh because he, he just comes up with great ideas and and he makes his work uh, and give our best you know and that's i mean that's the best the producer can do for the band is just extract whatever you have to give whatever good inputs you have to give so in the press release there is a quote from Raphael saying that fabio has never sung better on an angra album and hearing you uh talking about dennis and how he brought the best of you guys was there any difference in the way you approach his vocals because I agree that his uh, performance is uh, the best I've heard in Angra. Well, I think it's it's both, uh, it's two things, two main things. First of all, Fabio is going to 11 years in the band. Mm -hmm. So he's a long time member. Soon enough, he's going to be in the band longer than any other singer. So he's more comfortable than ever to come up with ideas and to sing whatever he wants to sing. And not only that, but Dennis also, uh, is great recording vocals and he had a blast because Fabio is just a machine, mm -hmm. you know, he records yeah. really fast, is really efficient, uh, his tuning is flawless and his voice is very elastic so he can do basically anything. So I, I, they had a lot of fun recording. That's something that's not always the case because recording an album is a lot of work and it's very strenuous for the singer, you know. Yeah. But in this case, I think they had a lot of fun and that, you know, you can hear it. I, I, I will admit I was got totally wrong because I was prepared to ask you uh, who is doing the male operatic vocals in Tears of Blood alongside Amanda. So is Fabio. Everything is done by Fabio on this one, aside from the female vocals. Yeah, yeah. And that's just, uh, you know, one example of, of what he can do with his voice. He can sing harsh vocals. He can sing melodic. He can sing quietly he can sing uh operatic he can sing growls if you want to you know he can sing two voices at the same time which is very bizarre he showed it he showed it to us <laughs> a while ago with harmonics he can do anything you know oh, he's really a machine you have speaking of vocals you also have a, a very uh, important guest appearance in the album lenin correct yes so what was his contribution in uh, vida seca well uh, vida seca the lyrics I wrote, they talk about childhood in, in you know, poor areas of Brazil. Mm -hmm. And many third world countries can relate to the reality of the child that's born in poor conditions. And from a very, very early age, the child has to work, sometimes can't even study 
because it has to support the family, you know, and there's all the balance between being a kid and having adult responsibilities. And that's the start of the lyric that's sang in Portuguese. And Lenini comes from the Northeast of Brazil where this reality is rampant, mm. you know? And he's an artist that we have always admired greatly and we always wanted to, co to collaborate with him. So he was the perfect singer for the part because he really embodies the Brazilian spirit in his voice. And he brought a lot of authenticity to this part, you know? Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the first Angra song that he used, at least part of it, Portuguese lyrics, correct? No, no. Actually, we have a few songs in the past with uh, excerpts of uh, Portuguese. We have uh, Carolina the Fourth with the, the Portuguese choirs. We have uh, Casa e Casador uh, that is in the EP Hunters and Prey, is a, is a Portuguese version of Hunters and Prey, actually. And we have also Late Redemption, where uh, Milton Nascimento, a very famous uh, Brazilian singer, is also doing vocals in Portuguese and some few parts here and there singing Portuguese as well. Have you considered doing an entire album with Portuguese lyrics? Not really, you know. Uh, I think it's important to have the Portuguese language in the album to, you know, to pay tribute to where we come from. But I don't think singing a whole album in Portuguese would sound great. You know, English is a better suited language for mm -hmm. metal, in my opinion. So the Japanese edition of uh, Cycles of Pain have, uh, both of them have bonus material. Um, and I want to ask about what Kiko and Fernanda from Crypta did uh, for uh, the speed version of Tears of Blood? Yeah, so we had the song Tears of Blood and we thought it would be fun to try it out with a speed arrangement. Because mm -hmm. it's a great song that, I mean, uh, we have this concept in the band that a song should sound great, whatever the arrangement is. So it doesn't matter if you play it in an acoustic guitar on the beach, or you have a, if you have a full band playing the song, it should sound great regardless. Mm -hmm. And we thought it would be fun to have this operatic version with Fabio and Amanda. And also, we thought it would be fun to have a metal version. And the lyrics demand for a female singer. So that's why we called Fernanda. She uh, is the singer of Crypto, of course. Everybody knows her doing the growls, but she's a great, clean singer as well. Yes. And a metal, just a metal singer, you know? So we, we called her and she did a great job. And of course, we needed to have Kiko in the album because he's a brother, even though he doesn't play with us anymore. He's still part of the, the organization of the band, you know? So it was great having him in this song. And I mean, the Japanese, they love a speed song and that's why that's the bonus for them. We can only get the, uh, this uh, bonus song uh, only in the Japanese version. There are no plans to really release it. Any, uh, I don't know, even have a seven, seven inch. I don't know. That's a possibility. Uh, we haven't, you know, discussed it yet, but I'm sure it's going to be on YouTube soon enough. So people will be able to listen to it and maybe we'll release a single or a special version with, with just the song and maybe a few other cuts we're planning on. That will be great. Is it correct that you are working with uh, Antoine de Montremy for a Nancra documentary? That is true. Yes. Antoine is a great friend, a longtime fan of the band that we grew, you know, friends with, uh, uh, with his going to the shows. And he has a channel, Juke TV. Mm -hmm. uh, he always did great interviews with us. And he, you know, uh, came up with the idea for a documentary that he wanted to fund and, and do all by himself and he's doing an amazing job he has followed us around the world uh doing this documentary and it's been great you know uh, to have his company he really knows the man deeply he understands the fans the fans like him he knows a lot of them so yeah it's in the works and i believe next year should be out oh that will be awesome uh, and speaking of playing live and touring what are the touring plans right now for Angra, for the rest of 2023 and, of course, 2024. So we'll finish 2023 playing in Brazil. We have quite a few shows in November and December. And we're all already planning to restart the tour in March in Brazil again and maybe branching out to Europe and, and U.S. We're looking into it right now as we speak. And we have, in the U.S., we have the 70,000 tons of metal cruise yeah. ship in January. And then in September, we have the Prague Power Festival 
And of course, we will look for festivals to play in, in Europe in the summer. Oh, that will be great to see Ankara in Chicago. Just make a note of it. Yeah, I hope we can come back. We played uh, the, the Joliet, right? Yes. Uh, yes. In 2021, you released Resonance. Um, what did you learn from that experience? And is this something that you would like to do it again? Resonance was like um, just a lifeline for me uh, when it came to being able to play music while you couldn't leave the home, you know? So I took the time during the pandemic to write the album and it was a great experience. I did most of it by myself, but not entirely. I had help, but uh, it was a great experience just to, you know, be the dictator just for this one album. Because being in a band, it's all about balancing what everybody wants and everybody's vision for the music. And when it came to my solo album, it was really the first time where I called all the shots and I took all the decisions, you know? So that was really cool. And, and it, for sure, I want to do it again. I, I really love the results. I was really proud of it. And I had that feeling that if no one else likes the album but me, I'm, I'm happy just to have done it, you know? And yeah, but for sure, I'll do another one. Awesome. Uh, last question. Um, have you picked uh, the songs from the new album to play live? We have, yes. And soon enough, you know which <laughs> one they are. But uh, I tell you, it's a lot of them. Uh, so are you planning to have, uh, for example, a five or six and then uh, swap? Around that. Mm -hmm. Around okay. that. Felipe, thank you very much for your time. I uh, wish you the best. Uh, I love you, the man. new album. And hopefully we'll see you again in Chicago. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. See you soon. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.